Hello everyone, my name is Jilly Johnston and I am a life and worthiness coach as well as a speaker. And I am just so excited and so honored to be here and share this experience with you. We're gonna be talking about goal setting and intention setting and the highest version of yourself, all things Amanda and what Amanda stood for. So Amanda was one of my very, very, very best friends. I considered her a sister, just like, we all did. And she has impacted me in so many ways. She still impacts me and there is yet a day that it has gone by that I have not thought about her in the past three years. So Amanda and I met when we were in Peru. We volunteered together uh, in Juan Chaco and it's like a sleepy little surf town in northern Peru. And I, my first impression of her was not great. And I always think that that's so funny because it was not love at first sight. Um, and I think that that is what makes this so meaningful is that first impressions don't have to mean everything if you're truly meant for one another, if you're truly meant to love one another and be in one another's lives. Um, and so the first time we met, I had strep and she like, you know, was like 10 feet away and she heard I had strep and she's like, oh, I'm susceptible to strep. I can't be around you. And then just walked away. Um, and then a week later we ended up sitting next to each other at this event and we talked and we talked and we talked about life and about love and about volunteering and about traveling, about who we want to be. And from that point forward, we were in each other's lives. Um, and it was just, it was so beautiful. And so what Amanda taught me was to live life to the fullest, was to not settle, right? Not, not just succumb to life's pressures or what is conventional, but instead create the life that was intentional for me, that filled me up, that was authentic to me to live boldly, to live unapologetically, um, to do what needed to be done in order to meet a goal, right? But then look at yourself and say, but what do I want? What do I want out of life and what do I want to experience and how can I make the most of this experience? And so the day after her death, um, I found out on the first and on the second, I was in school for med school. Um, I was taking my prereqs to get into med school and I went and I quit school the next day and I launched my coaching and speaking business and have been doing it ever since. So she lives with me every day. Um, and today we're going to be talking about goal setting. We're going to be talking about intention setting and I'm going to bring you a workshop that I was doing before her and then evolved since her um, and everything that I learned. And so thank you for spending this time with me. Thank you for spending this time on yourself. Thank you for spending this time in Amanda's spirit and in Amanda's legacy, because ultimately what she would want is for you to live authentically, for you to look at yourself and say, what would make me happy? How can I find happiness right now? And what would I need to change in my life in order to find my happiness, my joy, my authenticity? Because that is who she was, right? And then loved all of us for who we were in our authenticity, right? We didn't have to be like her because look at all of her friends and the, the array, right? She didn't make you want to be like her, right? She didn't force that upon you. It was she loved you for who you were and your authenticity and your life and your desires for yourself. And so we're going to be getting clear on what that is for you. Then has it changed, right? 2020 has been a year that has been a doozy for all of us, right? More than a doozy. It has taught us and allowed us to see what really do we value? What are our values and what are our priorities, right? And how do we want to live moving forward? How do we want to show up in our life for ourselves and those people in it, the people that mean the most, right? What do we want to experience and how do we want to feel? And that's what we're going to be talking about today because goal setting, right? It's not actually about the goal setting. It's not about the goal. It's about two things. It's about life creating, right? You set goals because it's the life that you want to create. So this is not goal setting. This is life creating creating a life that sets your soul on fire and allows you to show up boldly and authentically in your spirit and in Amanda's. Because when you do that, when you show up authentically and boldly as yourself, 
you then ignite the fire in everyone else. People can look at you and say, well, I've never seen, right? And this is what we did with Amanda. We've never seen someone live so full. We've never seen someone who has lived so authentically, even if it isn't conventional. And yet she did it. And when she did it, it sparked a seed in all of us that said, wow, if Amanda can do it, then what's meant for me? What could I do? If I lived authentically, if I lived to the fullest, if I lived boldly, what could I create? And that's what we're going to be talking about because it is life creating. Goal setting is life creating. And then it's not about the goal. It's about the person that you become while you are achieving that goal. Like, think about it, right? You have to face your fears. You're pushing your limits. You are getting out of your comfort zone. You have to face the doubt, face the insecurities, face any lack, scarcity, whatever, what ifs that you are struggling with. And you have to become an entirely different person in order to reach these goals. And that's the beauty. Because not only are you reaching the goal that you set for yourself, but you're also reaching a potential that was always inside of you. You just needed that goal to stretch you for you to reach that potential. So if you've not read the book by Daniel Laporte, Core Desired Feelings, I encourage you to do so. It is amazing because this is the thing, right? Amanda didn't just set a goal to set a goal. She set a goal because it was in alignment with her values, with her priorities, and how she wanted to feel in life, right? She wanted adventure, and she wanted freedom, and she wanted connection. And so her goals aligned with those things, right? With those experiences that helped her feel alive. And so a lot of times when we set a goal, and this is what Danielle Laporte says in Core Desired Feelings, that will say, I want to make six figures, right? Or I want a five bedroom, four bathroom house, or I want a Mercedes, right? Or I want a white picket fence and I want two and a half children, right? Whatever it is. But then we get those things and we still aren't happy. Right. And Amanda talked about this when she traveled the world and asked people, are you happy? Right. When she read about it, when she was doing her own research, because it's not the circumstance that makes us happy. It's our experience. It's our perception and perspective of what's happening that creates our feelings. And so Daniel Laporte said, instead of focusing on the house and the partner and the car and whatever else, focus, how do you want to feel? How do you want to feel in your life? And then from there, make goals, right, that bring about those feelings, right? So if you want to feel alive, if you want to feel adventure, right? Say, okay, I want to feel adventure. What can I do this year? What can I incorporate into my life that will make me feel adventurous, free, alive? If you want to feel connection, right? What goal can you set that will create that experience of connection? Maybe it's to find a tribe of friends, right? Maybe it's to fall in love. Maybe it is to connect with people on a deeper level and up your communication skills and put yourself out there and learn about vulnerability, right? So I want you to write down, I want you to take a few minutes, I want you to write down how do you want to feel in your life? And then from there, what do you want to do? This is where the goal setting is. What do you want to do this year, the bucket list, right? The writing your bucket list for 2021 or beyond, right? that will help you feel that way, right? So I wanna take a trip to Hawaii, right? Or I wanna go to Vietnam, you know? So, and then here's the other thing. So I'm gonna give you a second to pause and pause this in just a second. So we have how we wanna feel, right? You're gonna write down how you wanna feel and then you're gonna write what you want to experience. Okay, so I want you to do a few things when you write this down. It's not, I will go to Thailand right? Or I will get a new job. It's not that. I want you to affirm it, 
right? So if you're looking for a new job, right, to have more abundance, financial freedom, freedom, joy, balance in your life, if that's what you're looking to feel, then I want you to say, I have a new job at get specific, so affirm it, not I'm going to or I will, but I have get specific, make it measurable, right? So if I have a new job at blank, right, by an end date. And I want you to set a date, right? And so if we're focusing in 2021, but you can do beyond that, right? Let's say like, I have a new job at blank by July 1st, 2021. I want you to put an end date and I want you to make it measurable so that you can see if you're getting there, right? It's not just, I am more connected, right? Okay, so if that's what you want, you want the feeling of connection. So maybe you would say, I have a group of friends that we meet weekly via Zoom or in person, right? by March 2nd, 2021. So I want you to go through and I want you to say how you want to feel in your life, right? In all areas, in your personal life, in your health, in your relationships, all right? In your career, your self, okay? I want you to go through and I want you to pause this. I want you to write how you feel, and write goals, making, affirming it, making it measurable, specific, and have an end, end date, a by when. All right, so go ahead and pause this for as long as you need in order to write those out, and then you can continue playing this. Okay, so you wrote those out, you did your thing, right? You have how you want to feel in 2021, okay? You have what you want to experience, right? What you want to create in your life. By when, affirming it, right? So like I said, goal setting is not just about the goal, right? It's about who you need to become in order to make that goal happen. So a lot of people think, AKA New Year's resolutions, okay? A lot of people think that we need to take action, right? So I wanna write a book, all right? I have my book written by December 30th, 2021. Okay, great, I love that goal, right? And you can't just willpower your way through something. So if anyone would like a really good book on top of Danielle Laporte's Core Desired Feelings, it's like Charles Duhag or Duhag or something like that. Something like that. The um, power of habits. Okay. The power of habits. So they talk about in this book, he talks about in this book, it's all research based, that willpower is not enough to get you through. Meaning that when you set New Year's resolutions, right, and you try to take action, 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 there's one piece missing because willpower is not enough to get you through. So I'm about to give you a secret hack into how to make goals and resolutions last. Are you ready for this? Drum roll. Okay, this is how it works. Our thoughts create our feelings, right? A lot of times we think our feelings create our thoughts. No, we've gotta go deeper. We've gotta go into the subconscious. Our thoughts, create our feelings. Our feelings create our actions and our actions create our results. Okay. Which then creates our circumstance. So if you want to change the results that you're getting in life, it's not about taking different action. All right. We actually have to go before that. We have to go into our thinking. And this is what creates a whole new way of being and a whole new person that you have to become, which is so cool which is why I do what I do, okay? So it's not about the action, right? It's about the thinking, right? So if you are thinking, have imposter syndrome, like who am I to write a book? No one's gonna read this. I hate writing. I don't know what to write. I don't know what to say. No one's gonna read this anyways. I don't know how to publish, right? Whatever it is, it's gonna create the feeling of suckness, of defeat, 
of lack of motivation, uninspired, right? Because who would be inspired to write if that's what's going on in your mind, right? So what I want you all to do is as you look at these goals that you set for yourself, all right, I want you to think like already, you already wrote the book. You already fell in love. You already hit that financial goal, right? You paid off your debt, whatever it is. What would you think if you already did it? What would you think? What would you think about yourself? What would you think about your life? All right, like, holy cow, I did this. It wasn't as bad as I thought. I can't believe I did it that quickly. Holy cow, I finally did it. I achieved this thing that I've been working so hard on. So I want you to look at what thoughts would you have about the goal if you already created it, if you already attracted it, manifested it, achieved it, okay? And I want you to write down those thoughts. So when the doubt comes in, right? It's okay to have doubt. We all do. We all suffer from imposter syndrome. That's not the issue. The issue is that we believe the doubt. We believe the self-doubt. We believe the self-criticism. We believe the imposter syndrome. And then we don't do anything about it. So when you are dealing with doubt, when you are dealing with imposter syndrome, what I want you to do is I want you to write down the doubts, the thoughts that are in your head. Just write them down uncensored. I don't care how ridiculous they are. It's all good. Write them down without judgment and then think, okay, what if I already had the goal? What if I already achieved this? What else could be true? What else would I think if I already achieved it? Okay. And I want you to write that down because like I said before, willpower is not enough to get you through. That's why it's nine days in to New Year's resolutions and you already fall off the bandwagon because it's not the actions. It's the thoughts. Okay. So I want you to go through each of these goals and say, if I already had it, what would I think? Right. And if any doubts come in, you can write them down and say, okay, for me, what else could be true? So I want you to go ahead and pause this and do that. Okay. So now we look at these goals that you wrote and this is also helping you. Okay. Who would you have to become in order to hit that goal in order to create that goal? So let's say, let's say that, you know, you wanted to fall in love, but you're not putting yourself out there, right? Who would you have to become? You'd have to become someone who is willing to put themselves out there, who is willing to get hurt, who is willing to face rejection right? Who is willing to be open? So who would you have to become in order to create this goal? So who would you have to become, right? Open, vulnerable, right? Knows who the heck you are. I want you to go through each of them and I want you to write it down, okay? Who you'd have to become. But then I want you to find three pieces of evidence in your life already. So today, how you are already those things, how are you already open? How are you already vulnerable? How are you already strong? How are you already, how have you already faced rejection and made it, right? How are you already this? So this goal, who would you have to become? And then three pieces of evidence of how it is true already. So go ahead and pause this here and do that. Okay. So we set our goals, right? We said, how do we want to feel in life? What experiences do we want to have? We affirmed it. We got specific. It is measurable. We have a by when date, right? Then we came up with the thoughts that we would have to have because it's our thoughts that eventually create the results. It's not just the action. The thoughts inspire the action, which creates the results, right? So we came up with the thoughts of if we already achieved it, what would we think, right? 
then who would we have to become? And three pieces of evidence of how we are that person already. So if any of you've heard of the law of attraction, right, manifestation, you don't get what you want. Sorry, I hate to break it to you. Hate to break it to you. You don't get what you want. You get what you are. So if you want more love, you need to focus on how you are loving, how you are love, how you are worthy of love already. If you want to focus on abundance, you want to attract more abundance in your life, more wealth in your life. How are you already abundant? How is wealth already showing up in your life? Right? And when you focus on that, then you create more of that because you're in that energy. You see it as evidence. You see that it is there and then it inspires you to act from that abundant, wealthy place, which will only create more wealth and abundance. Secret. I am dropping all types of secrets in here. I'm giving you the key to all of this because 2021 is your year. And I can't wait to hear about it. So this is the last piece. All right. Not everything happens on our timeline. Okay. And, and here's the thing too. This is really, really powerful. That when you are setting goals and are pushing your boundaries, right? They're making you grow beyond anything that you thought you would grow, you ever thought you would do. You are meant, if you are actually setting goals that push you, you are only meant to reach 50% of your goals, right? Within that time frame. So if you are failing 50% of the time, you're doing it right. And that's the thing is we don't talk about failure, right? We shame ourselves and guilt ourselves and feel so disappointed and frustrated and all the things, right? And the imposter syndrome comes in when, when you are really pushing yourself, really setting your goals high, you were only meant to achieve 50% of them. It doesn't mean you stop unless you want to, right? Unless that goal isn't aligned with you anymore. It doesn't mean that you stop. It just means that you keep going and you are committed no matter what, no matter how long it takes to make sure that this goal happens. If you want to write a book and you don't get it done by December 30th, 2021, it doesn't mean you stop and throw away the manuscript. It means that you sit your butt down and you keep going until the book is done. So you need to change your definition of failure. Failure is you're one step closer. If you don't reach that goal, guess what? You are way further now than you would have been if you never started. Focus on how far you've come. Focus on the progress that you have made. When you start losing motivation, you start lacking inspiration. Everyone asks me, how do I keep going? Focus on your progress. Focus on how far you've come. And that will inspire you to keep going. 2020 has been one heck of a year. The past three years have been challenging and growing and beautiful and grieving and full of sadness and full of happiness and full of celebration and memories and, and missing, right? But the best way to honor Amanda and her spirit and her legacy is to do this for yourself. She is there for you every step of the way. She has never left you and your side. So in the name of Amanda's spirit, in the name of Amanda's legacy, in the name of love for her, bring your gifts, bring your light to the world. You matter that much. You are that significant. You are worthy of everything that you can imagine and create and anything you desire. Do this for yourself, do this for her, and do this for the world. Thank you. So please follow me at Jilly Johnston Coaching on Instagram. Friend me, Jilly Johnston, on Facebook. You can look me up at jillyjohnston.com. And remember to dream big. Live authentically. And remember, be inspired by Amanda G. My heart goes out to you. Thank you all.